everybody. Welcome to Muse TV. We are back for another episode and we got two amazing people. One, well, two people you may know, especially if you're in the sports world, in the comedy world. We got Frank Nicotero. We got Wayne Root. How are you guys doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. Great to be here. And I know we were talking off camera a second ago. You're a big sports fan, so this should be fun. Yes, exactly. And you got something new. It's a podcast dedicated to sports betting called Crush House. Tell us a little bit about it and how everything got started with you guys. You want me to start, Frank? Yeah, go for it, Wayne. Absolutely. Well, I listen, I've been in this business sports handicapping since I was 16 years old. In 1977, the media called me the next Jimmy the Greek and the betting whiz kid. And uh, I had over 3 million clients and counting. Might have been several million more than that, but I stopped counting at 3 million <laughs> during the decades of the 80s and the 90s and the early 2000s. And, uh, and then sports gambling was legalized all over this country. That was when it was illegal. And then it was legalized in the year 2018 by the Supreme Court on a state-by-state -state basis. And I said, I'm getting back in this business. I built a nice business uh, in, in several other areas, including writing and writing books and writing newspaper columns and, and radio talk shows and TV talk shows. But then I got back in this business and we put together a company called Winners Inc., which is publicly traded, ticker symbol WNRS. And the, and the uh, subsidiary is Vegas Winners, which I'm the CEO of. And we've got Crush House as our trademark name for our series of video podcasts starring myself and Frank, among several other great stars. And uh, it's great to have Frank with us on board. And we have fun every single week with three different video podcasts. The main one, Crush House, and then Crush House Cappers, which is uh, sports handicappers talking sports gambling. And then Crush House Legends, which is me interviewing some of the biggest stars in sports. And then Frank uh, gets into that with uh, Sean Salisbury, former NFL quarterback, gets some of those interviews as well. So we spread it out among three different podcasts. And by September, I expect to have one of the more popular sports gambling podcasts in America and a very bustling company with, with lots of gaming licenses. We, we have licenses right now with some of the big partnerships and licenses with some of the biggest gaming companies in America. So that's our story. Oh, and I saw the videos and I, Frank, when I saw you and Rick Mahorn, <laughs> personally, I was like, first of all, I was just like, wow, you got Rick Mahorn, which is one of the one of the bad boys from the, from the Detroit Pistons. I remember seeing him play, which kind of still scares me because of the play that they used to have against the Lakers. But for Frank, for you, Frank, what is it like to be playing off on the shows? And you got Sean Salisbury, you got Rick Mahorn, you got some great professional athletes who really give a good insight. It's fantastic. I mean, we also had Mitch Williams. I'm a huge baseball fan. I have Forbes Field and Three Rivers right behind me. Uh, I mean, working with Sean Salisbury, we had Sean on uh, as a guest with Wayne and I, and he was so great that they're like, hey, Sean, do you want to be a part of the team? So Sean and I uh, have got to welcome Rick Mahorn in the past couple of weeks to talk NBA playoffs. And Rick will be on during the NBA playoffs, which we all know, I think, last till October now, because <laughs> it's literally every series is going six or seven games and we still have I don't know what seven rounds left. It's insane. But, but yeah, I mean, look, I grew up a Laker fan, even though I grew up in Pittsburgh, I like the Sixers, but I also grew up a little bit in LA. So I was always a Laker fan. So uh, Mahorn being, you know, the baddest of the bad boys. Uh, it's been amazing to talk to this guy and he is hysterical. He should be on TV more. I know he does radio coverage for the Pistons, but you know, just his react. My favorite things with Rick is he'll tell us about players. He won't hold back names, but also when I've wore a Rick Mahorn t-shirt on one of our episodes, which you can see at crushhouse.com. And then last week I had bought a, a Rick Mahorn signed Jersey off of eBay and had that on and surprised him. So he's just a guy I look forward to talking with every week because he's there to have fun, but then he gives you championship insight. I mean, the guy won a title in 89. So to have him give a little gravitas to the show when we're talking basketball, and then we had Doug Gottlieb, who everybody might remember from ESPN and the Doug Gottlieb show, the Gottlieb show on Twitter. He has like- We had Ron Jaworski. We had Ron Jaworski on talking- Oh my God, I forgot, I forgot Jaws. That's right, Wayne. I mean, having Jaws on- and, you know, the Eagles growing up were my NFC team. So that was a big thrill having Jaworski. And our, our premiere episode was Pete Rose, for God's sake. So Wayne and, and everybody, we're, we're bringing these great guests. I love Frank, but I knew there was something I didn't like about Frank. He just said Philadelphia Eagles. I'm, know. A, Dallas, I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan since I'm five years old. So Frank, <laughs> I like you, but I hate you. But you I know mean, I'm a Steeler guy, too. I see your Steeler helmet up there. Steelers you know okay. Steelers are okay, although they did keep my Dallas Cowboys from being probably the best team in the history of the world. They true. hadn't beaten us in two cheap 
last second Super Bowl wins, we'd be the greatest Super Bowl team ever. So that is true. You. <laughs> that, that's that's true. But see, this is what I like about what you guys have created. You you bring in athletes who actually have an insight into the game to give p- fans and people who are going to bet against games an insight that maybe you won't get anywhere else. Well, there's it's incredible. There's two, there's two insights in every one of these shows. Mm-hmm. Insight number one is you bring the athlete on to give you insights into the locker room and the team and insider information. Hopefully that gives you some sort of an edge when you're looking to bet on a team. Yeah. But then you've got guys like me and Frank and my team of sports handicappers. Frank knows everything about sports gambling. He's a lifelong sports gambler. I've been the number one odds maker in America for 35 years. I hate to admit that number, but 35 <laughs> years as the number one sports handicapper and odds maker. And I've got a team of guys. And now I welcome to my team, Frank, who I think is as knowledgeable about sports gambling and point spreads as anybody I've met. And so we've got this team that'll talk about the game inside the game and inside the locker room. And then the, the sports gambling game, you know, Vegas insiders and the inside Vegas gambling game, two very different worlds that collide on crush house and on Vegaswinners.com. Yeah. And that's what is super exciting about it. I agree. You get, but you get, you get the insight and then you get the gambler's insight. So it, it, it's such a one-stop shop for a sports fan and someone who wants to bet on a game. And we also kind of teach you if you're a novice at betting, how bets are made and some of the terminology. Yeah. But, you know, all, the, all this came because I'm an entertainment guy. Yeah. And I think sports gambling is entertainment. That's what it is. People make too much of it. You know, if you make money at it, great. We're going to give you a winning edge that can help you make money. But it's always been entertainment. I've been on TV for 35 years saying, why aren't you legalizing it? It's no different than me taking my wife or girlfriend out to a movie and then dinner and after dinner drinks. And when the night's over, I've spent, you know, $400. Well, if I bet $400 on a football game, it's three to four hours of ups and down adrenaline (laughs) rush, pedal to the metal, the greatest fun you've ever had. And when it's over, if you happen to win, it's the only form of entertainment in the world that pays you four hundred dollars to have a good time. And if you lose, it's no different than if you went out to dinner with your wife in a movie and spent four hundred dollars. So it, to me, it's the greatest form of entertainment in the world. And you know what? And and the 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 stigma that was around sports betting in the in the eighties and nineties is now gone. pretty much gone because we've already heard stories out of Europe with a lot of the soccer soccer leagues out in Europe that they're implementing sports betting into right. the arena and the game. Here too. Yeah. You can bet at many arenas around the United States now. You know, for those who don't know, sports gambling is legal at this very moment. It changes every day, by the way. Mm-hmm. There's some new legislature every day that says we're passing sports gambling, but it's, it's in like 27 or 28 states, including the District of Columbia at this moment. Uh, they're not all open yet, but it's been approved. And by next year at this time, probably 35 to 40 states. And by two years from now, 44 to 45 out of 50 states will have legal sports gambling. Everybody agrees. The big one that just legalized was Florida. That's the monster. And we're waiting for <laughs> Texas and California. And then we've got all the big states because New York just did it as well. Yeah. So, so we're on our way to basically where no matter where you are in the United States, you can bet on sports. But the question is, why do it without the winning edge? We give yeah. you the winning edge at Vegas Winners and Crush House. We help you to win more often then you will ever win on your own. I can't say you'll always win, but more often than you'll ever win on your own, which gives you a chance to have a good time and each time make $200, $500, $1,000 for enjoying yourself three, four hours at a time. And then go out to dinner with your winnings and take your wife or girlfriend <laughs> or, or, or boyfriend or significant other out to dinner. It's the greatest. <laughs> Exactly. There you Frank go. Frank likes it. I love it. If you win 500 bucks, take them all out. Wife, girlfriend, yeah. significant other, all Life of them. Piece. And your bookie. Take your bookie <laughs> out to dinner. Come on. Take him out. Be a sport. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. And what a question I want to bring up to you guys, because your sports, you deal with betting. And we, we've had, you already mentioned Pete Rose was on the show. Do you really think at this time, because I feel like Pete Rose needs to be in the Hall of Fame and needs to be in that hall because and I think what he did in back, back then, when you look at the big picture of it now, it's kind of like it's nothing compared to what was what exactly. has been done. Frank, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Listen, I grew up hating Pete Rose because he was so good. 
But the irony is when I played Little League, I would run to first base on a walk. If I caught the third out, I'd spike the ball running off. I wanted the other team to hate me. And as I grew older, I realized how brilliant Pete Rose was. But also, look, he's the hit king. All right. This guy unquestionably should be in the Hall of Fame. And, you know, let's look. He, you know, he admitted he gambled on sports, whether he bet on the Reds to win or lose. He said he didn't bet on the Reds. I don't care. There have been guys that are in the Hall of Fame that have done far worse. I mean, Ty Cobb admitted to a murder. I mean, you know, there's guys. And now you got the steroid guys. You know, there's going to be guys guys that got in that aren't Barry Bonds or Roger Clemens that did do steroids. And, and, and the people in baseball know who those people are. Uh, the fact Pete Rose has been held out just because he gambled on sports, which I'm, I guarantee he's not the only guy in sports to ever do that. And he's been such a great ambassador for baseball his whole life. He absolutely belongs in, and it's it's an injustice. Well, and let me mention, despite you being a Philadelphia Eagles fan, Frank, uh, if you <laughs> ran if you ran to first base on a walk, I love you. You're my I did, I did. I love you. That's great. I this did. Is a, this is a man bromance going on here. Two straight guys who love each other. I the love anyone people. who runs to first base. But let me say one more thing. Yeah. Pete Rose did only one thing. He bet on his team. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. Zero. Do you know in Australia where they're much more liberal? Uh, and progressive about gambling, about sports gambling. In Australia, they actually think there's something wrong with an athlete who doesn't bet on themselves. They have no confidence in themselves. Mm -hmm. Olympic athletes in Australia make a bet on themselves when they go to the Olympics. <laughs> What's wrong with betting on yourself? Pete Rose bet on his team to win. It's not a crime. He should be in the Hall of Fame. There's only one crime. It's a crime. Pete Rose isn't in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I agree with you. I agree with you on that one. And Frank, if you are taking out little kids going into the ca going into home plate, you get another star for me on that one. <laughs> well, well, I was never I was never that big. Catcher was usually the stocky guy on the team, right? And I was about you know a buck ten, buck twenty. You know, I was never going to take. But I was so fast that the play at the plate was never close, so it didn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, if, you, if you're going to brag about your acumen going back to high school, I just want to mention. Just want to mention. I'm the worst athlete in the world, the least coordinated athlete in the world, but I did one thing. Good, well, two things good. I'm very fast. And number two, I hit like an animal. So I was a monster back in high school. And all I did was aim at the ball carrier and try and knock his head off. And I was really good at it and, and good enough that I was actually able to, to play in a college team for a little while as well. So I only athlete in the world that has no athletic ability but I hit like a laser guided missile and I never, <laughs> never worried about my own body. As long as I could knock the other guy unconscious, I didn't really care what happened to me. That's the attitude you need to win in football. In baseball, you need to run to first base after a walk. So yeah. I think we, got a, we got a team here, Frank. We yeah, got a team. A, this is why it works so well. <laughs> and here's one point we got to, I wanted to bring up because we do a wrestling podcast here on, on Muse. And we've seen even like, professional wrestling try and get into this gambling game as well and betting game which is kind of weird to me because <laughs> it's weird. really scripted and i want to know what your thoughts on that where, where you see wwe trying to do this as well well you have your thoughts on it ufc makes sense for gambling and we've yeah. actually got it we've got a handicapper does nothing but ufc at vegaswinners.com dan the man hamilton he's fantastic at picking ufc winners he's got an unmatched record so when you go to vegas winners we've got the winners for you and we've got them free for, for as long as you need them, they're free at Vegas winners. You go, what do you mean for as long as you need them? I mean, free forever. Your picks are free forever at VegasWinners.com. That's pretty cool. Nobody else offers that. But UFC makes sense. Nobody's fixing matches. But World Wrestling, come on. Yeah. You, can't bet on something. <laughs> you can't bet on something where they know the outcome beforehand. If the word gets out, the fix is in. Makes no sense at all. So I'm I'm not going to give you a, a thumbs up on that one. I'll give you a thumbs down. Well, you know, it's like, you know, there was a lot of times, a lot of these uh, websites you would see, and I'm not saying the, the legal ones, but some of the illegal ones too, were taking bets on who was going to win Survivor or who was going to win, you know, some of these pre-taped shows on TV that I had cameramen, people, you know, friends that worked on it. And when I would show them the list, their eyebrows would raise, like, you know, they've signed a non-compete, but you're telling me they already know the outcome they could bet on. So, Wrestling, I agree with Wayne. That doesn't yeah. seem to be something you should bet on. Yeah, you know, what, you know what's going to be the biggest thing ever in the history of gambling? What? Betting on presidential politics. Yeah. If the bets were legal in the last election, mm -hmm. there would have been more money bet on Trump versus Biden, and before that, Trump versus Clinton, than the Super Bowl. Vegas, yeah. Vegas, I love Vegas. I live in Vegas. But Vegas is so dumb. If you legalize political betting tomorrow, 
Millions of people will fly in in the two months before a presidential election and bet thousands, if not millions of dollars, you know, some of the rich ones, hundreds yeah. of thousands, millions of dollars each. It'll be the biggest boon ever to the Vegas economy. So you want political gambling. You don't want world wrestling gambling. But those <laughs> two share a lot of things in common, wrestling and politics. No question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why when, we, when I first saw that, I was like, what the hell? This is this? <laughs> and, I, and I have friends who are pro wrestlers. And they were even like, I don't get that, but hey, you know what? They're making money. If it pays my contract, I'm good. <laughs> They're making a lot of money. A yeah, lot exactly. of money. Exactly. But um, to close everything off, where could they find you? Uh, tell us a little bit about when the show airs after uh, people can watch and follow you. Frank, lead the way. I know we shoot, we shoot Friday mornings. We're going to shoot tomorrow. We have Rick Mahorn again talking NBA playoffs. And, and, and Wayne will shoot a show uh, also on Friday. And then it's up Friday evening. So you can watch it on the weekend, uh, crushhouse.com, vegaswinners.com. There's multiple ways to find us. Just Google Wayne Allen Root, Google Frank Nicotero Sports Gambling. You're going to find us, but it's Crush House with the K, two H's in the middle, crushhouse.com and vegaswinners.com. And I must add that we made the decision early on in this business, free point spread winners forever. All you have to do is come to vegaswinners.com and register. That's it. Give us your email and we give you free winners forever like for the rest of your life it's that simple vegaswinners.com because winning isn't everything it's the only thing that's awesome i'm gonna be signing up because i'm gonna be in vegas august 21st to the 27th so we gotta go. get together my oh, friend definitely definitely because See i that? need to learn the sports betting game because when i was working in pro sports i wasn't allowed to and now that i don't I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to get into this, and I want to learn a little bit more, so I may be hitting you up, boy. You got it. You see that star behind me? That yeah. star is a replication of my 180-pound granite star in the sidewalk in front of Paris Resort and Casino. Right? I, made, I was inducted into the Vegas, uh, basically, Hall of Fame. It's called the Vegas Walk of Stars on the sidewalk all up and down Vegas Strip. One of uh, the only sports handicapper ever, the only odds maker ever. Uh, Frank Sinatra is in it. Awesome. Dean Martin's in it. Wayne Newton's in it, Liberace's in it, Elvis is in it, and Jeez. Wayne Allen Root. Elvis and Wayne Root. I love that combination. <laughs> the that Kings. That is a very good combination. That I'll is the King. Exactly. I'll show you around, baby. King of Vegas. Definitely. Hey, thank you so much. And if you like this video, don't forget to check them out. Hit your thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you soon here on Muse TV.